You can go just about anywhere on the bike trails, and while they work great for bikes, they aren't the best for a full-size ambulance. Bring you breaking news tonight out of Marshall County. Good evening. I'm Colin Dorsey. The body of a missing 13-year-old Iowa teen has been found. A new overnight growing concern over what happens to all of the information that your Amazon Alexa hears. Mm -hmm. May hear a lot. I can tell you right now, actually, outside is probably the most comfortable it's felt in a few days after that line of storms moved through. The man is dead after being hit by a train in downtown Des Moines. Today, the new fiscal year is officially here, and that means dozens of new laws are in effect for the state of Iowa. KWL's Olivia Schmidt. You might think keeping a bottle of sunscreen in your car is a good idea. But closed up in the middle of summer, your car gets really hot, 120 if not warmer. So that bottle of sunscreen in your door pocket, feeling all of that heat, and that heat starts breaking down the chemicals, making that bottle of SPF 30 a whole lot less effective. So this is how Iowa's bottle bill works. If I'm the store, for every bottle of Pepsi that Pepsi delivers, I give them a nickel. And then once you, the customer, come into my store for the bottle of Pepsi, you give me the nickel. And once you return that empty bottle, I give you your nickel back. And then once I return this empty bottle back to Pepsi, they give me my nickel plus a penny. Developing story now, a search continues in Lynn County after a man went underwater and did not resurface. Now, Taylor, they saw quite a bit of damage today, right? Well, that roof collapse did not happen when any teachers or students were here. It happened during a snow day. But now it's turned into somewhat of a logistical nightmare for administrators and teachers to make sure the students who normally attend here still get their education. They're on the roof, now they're on the ground. So this That's is a, not really where this, they're supposed to be. No, but it's a good couple days to get them back this up at true. least. Uh, it seems like it was yesterday, really. It's often called the turning point of the war. Newspapers filled entire pages June 6th, 1944, and the days following the D-Day invasion. I wanted to go to the war. My, my buddies were all getting drafted, and I, I couldn't go because I wasn't old enough. I had to get my parents' signature. And that's quite a feat. Glenn McLean landed on Omaha Beach on D-Day and is somewhat of a miracle. It was sad. Uh, landing craft I was on got sank, and everybody got killed except three. One, that, one of them had to take his legs off way high. Couldn't even fit him with artificial limbs. More than 2,000 died that day on Omaha Beach alone, but the invasion was heralded as a success, pushing back German forces. 18, then I went in, uh, and that was in 1943, summer of 19, in the middle of World War II. Curly Haltman was a world away. So all of my colleagues all went to Europe to the war there, and I was stayed back for a short time before uh, I ultimately went to the Pacific. But even now, D-Day sticks out in his mind. I remember this day very well. I was on maneuvers in the 42nd, with the Rainbow Division. Both men agree, had the D-Day invasion failed, the outcome of the war would have been much different. If we hadn't stopped Hitler there, he would have taken England for sure. And it would have been next. Never had a bill even close to that. Tammy Beasley got the surprise of her life when she received a bill from Alliant Energy totaling nearly $820. Her previous electric bills, right around $200. She says they've checked everything, even hiring private electricians to inspect their home they've only lived in for a year. She even has the bills from the home's previous owner. At one point, they shut off everything at the electric panel. Our big hitters were completely shut down, um, and they were still clocking. So, and, and they don't find anything. I mean, even the local Alliant guy came and did his tests and can't find anything. So she took to Facebook, posting her dilemma only to find dozens of others had a similar story, even with other utility companies. Some of those bills amounting in the thousands. I reached out to Alliant Energy and they told me all of their installed equipment is functioning properly. We don't install them if they're not recording accurately. So uh, for customers who are concerned about the smart meters, you know, our, our message to them is that they're accurately recording their energy use. Alliant blames a warmer May and June for a spike in electric bills. They say they've reviewed bills from about 200 customers and say only 8% were actually higher than usual, but encourage customers to call customer service if they think there is an error. Beasley says she will continue to fight for a resolution, not only for her, but for others as well.
Like I said, it's the can saga, and I don't know where to even start or where. I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm at the end. These are the signs you'll see along Frederick Avenue in Allwine. No more cans. Mario Perello got into the redemption business in 1982, but now he's stepping aside. But people come in with this volume, we have to go through all that and resort it and recount it and put it in our own can bag. For years, cans would be dumped into these bins and then sorted into bags like this, all for just a penny. So this is how Iowa's bottle bill works. If I'm the store, for every bottle of Pepsi that Pepsi delivers, I give them a nickel. And then once you, the customer, come into my store for the bottle of Pepsi, you give me the nickel. And once you return that empty bottle, I give you your nickel back. And then once I return this empty bottle back to Pepsi, they give me my nickel plus a penny. There's cigarette butts in the can bag. They reject the whole bag and all. Meaning they might not get that penny at all or their nickel. This chance plus all the work. Separation of the plastic and the glass. When you have somebody come in with a pickup load, and it's a process to go through. Has folks like Pirello hanging up their hats. A lot of people thought, oh, all we did is just took them and kept them in the bags and throw them on the truck. No. No, you got to go through all that sorting. And Pirello. Kids are outside. Um, they're out of school. They're excited to be on bikes, playing, doing things. Um, sometimes forgetting to take safety in mind. According to the CDC, unintentional injuries are the leading cause of death among children in the United States, some 12,000 dying every year. It's not just children who need to be careful. There are about a dozen summer-related injuries ERs will be seeing over the next few months. Charity Fecht is the trauma coordinator at Allen Hospital in Waterloo. Yep, all of our outlying towns um, will come into us. We get a lot from the rural communities that have the small um, first responders, things like that. Remember this? Well, bike injuries account for the largest number of summer injuries, more than skateboards, trampolines, swimming pools, and playground equipment combined. In 2015, emergency rooms treated nearly half a million bike injuries and nearly 1,100 deaths involved car versus bike. In eastern Iowa, you can go just about anywhere on the bike trails, and while they work great for bikes, they aren't the best for a full-size ambulance. But when trauma strikes, it's their job to get to you. Just don't be like me and forget your helmet when you decide to hit the trails. So if it's, you know, getting off and taking off on foot, um, borrowing a farmer's ranger or gator or something to get you through, um, we're lucky we, we have those resources we can utilize, but certainly it does pre present a challenge and then make the time to the patient, you know, getting to them much longer. Amber Heller is a nurse practitioner and spends some of her time volunteering in Denver, Iowa. Halfway between Tripola and then all the way over to the edge of Reedland. So service area is pretty big. As a rural service, Denver has a lot of ground to cover, meaning they have to be at the top of their game all the time for these summertime injuries. So when you're out there, it's you, you know, in this back of this ambulance, I don't have respiratory therapy. I don't have x-ray technology. Uh, take capabilities. It's just me and a partner and sometimes it's just you by yourself and it's just it's you trying to figure out what's wrong with patients, what they need and where they need to go. Back in the ER, FEC says ambulance crews and small hospitals are crucial in trauma treatment. They are out there and they don't have the resources that your larger facilities like us and bigger have. So you really have to give them kudos for how well they're doing with those patients and getting them out the door, stabilizing them and getting them to us as quickly as possible when they're really resources are minimal. They say there are always ways to make sure you don't see them this summer. It's just a matter of being aware of your surroundings and using common sense. And that's what a lot of traumas can be eliminated. Um, if you look at most traumas anyway, there's some event there that we could prevent that. So working on that prevention is our key. 